So let's uh, uh, go to this demo PyTorch tensor board. So here for tensor board use, you need to use this tensor board, uh, which is torch.utils tensor board toolkit. Okay. Now, all these imports that you have seen so far, okay, and, and these are again some uh, functional from torch and torch vision. So these are the two uh, important uh, uh, packages that we will use in this uh, section of demo. Now the help on function, this is doing nothing but uh, predicting the, uh, the max value okay, so that we will use. Now the CNN model is very, very simple and, and we have seen such CNN model previously, convolution one, convolution two, and fully connected one, two, and last one which is also one fully connected layer and giving out features as 10 which is for your c for 10 data set we are uh, using that same training model okay so that means the 10 uh, output feature it will actually predict and among them uh, uh, for which class it is giving your maximum prediction that will be your predicted things okay so uh, we have defined the uh, forward function as, as you have seen so far in this uh, previous uh, uh, demo. And we are returning the X. Now this X is actually uh, not the prediction, but output of the network, okay? So when you are applying the uh, cross entropy loss onto your output of this, uh, uh, of this uh, network, uh, output, then one softmax activation will be actually added. So you do not need to add any other uh, activations after the last layer. It will automatically be added inside your uh, cross entropy loss or whatever loss you are using, depending on that loss that uh, PyTorch will decide which uh, activations to use. Uh, and you also uh, uh, can define in, in defining uh, while defining the losses, okay, which uh, activations to use. Now uh, we are uh, down, uh, downloading uh, the data set, de uh, de defining the device, okay, and and again again. So this is just uh, the device which will take. This is just one for, for one GPU we are talking about for uh, for now, and then the hyper parameters. So as I was mentioning, that tensor board that we use for C or, or tune the network parameters, okay? So, or, or hyperparameters, which will improve the, the, the training of, or, or training outcome or prediction of your uh, neural network. Now here, you can see what are the hyperparameters we are using. Uh, we are using learning rate. So one range we have defined, so basically we have to see among this range, which learning rate will give me better results. Okay? So this is just uh, uh, some definition we are using. You can use your own definition for initializing these values. So here we are actually uh, getting this inside this list of parameters, which is kind of a dictionary where we have these key and value pairs. So key value key is the hyperparameter name itself and the values are the tuples for this things. Now batch size for, again, if you remember, we have talked about different batch size will have different impact on the training outcome as well as the performance. Okay? So for different batch size, what kind of outcome we are getting that we want to see. Okay? And then for the shuffle, uh, true and false. So uh, for training, we mentioned before, when we are uh, loading the training data set. Okay? So training data set, we mentioned that training data set, you need to uh, uh, use a shuffle equal to true. But here we are actually explicitly saying that for both we want to see, for true and false, we want to see what kind of performance we are getting because that way you will be uh, satisfied that yes, this is uh, these are the parameters that can give me better value, right? Now parameter values, we are defining the parameter values in this, uh, uh, taking all the values and storing the parameter values. So this will use for training loop, okay? So for each uh, 
combination of this okay so for this uh, lr for this batch size for this shopping for this lr for this batch size for this shopping what is the outcome okay so for all these combinations we will see what is the outcome so now we are downloading the data uh, set so uh, so we are actually using fashion evnis data set not c410 data set so this is also another data set so you can see this uh, this is also available in torch vision so torch vision dot data sets uh, dot if you put dot you can see what are the data sets available we are using fashion mnist data set so all the fashion and mnist data set that we have downloaded and then in the training loop we are, are defining the loop for the all the combinations right so now uh, for run id so for which uh, run id so basically for each run it will increase now for each tailor okay for this from these param values that we have defined previously right so for this error for the each batch size for uh shop okay so what will be the the performance so uh, this model is defined to device so it will the cnn will get transferred to the device which is the gpu here then train loader will uh, now training uh, loading the train loader using the shuffle value either true or false depending on the value we are getting from parameters now the criterion and optimizer that we have defined comment just for giving output like what kind of batch size and shuffle we are doing test range summary now tb is essentially the summary writer which is the tensor board writer uh, we are defining so summary writer we have imported uh, uh, the uh, tensor board as okay so so from the tensor board we have uh, imported this summary writer package which will uh, actually give you the interface to write the the different images different scalar values uh, scalar values different graphs okay so TV is the object here. Now we are adding the images, add images, add graph. Function will add the graph. So which add graph? The model and with the images. Okay. Now we are starting the epoch. So, so this for loop is essentially inside this for loop. So for each combination, we are now running this training. Right. So train loss zero, correct uh, zero. Now we have for each images uh, batch size of images we are doing the forward pass then optimizing and and doing the backward pass updating the parameters and after all the batches are uh, processed in the forward pass then we are actually adding what kind of loss we are got with this so now adding scalar will give you uh, the so for each epoch so basically we are trying to plot this inside one line graph so add scalar will add to the scalar tab inside your uh, tensor board with all these parameter graphs so total loss versus epoch total correct versus epoch so with each epoch how the loss is improving with each epoch how the accuracy is improving okay correctness accuracy all these we are calculating and updating inside the tensor board which is the tv then we are printing the batch size uh, shuffle value the uh, lr value which is the learning rate in the stochastic gradient descent uh, optimizer and then uh, just adding the hyperparameters uh, to update this so basically after running the entire uh, loop we will just close this tv which is the tensor board so you can see that for each run uh, run id one two three so we are running actually for uh, 12 times okay for each time, how many batch size have been processed with each LR value shuffle. So this is just entire loop. Now from this, you can see that tracking the, the performance, right? So which we want to track, it is very hard. So TensorFlow will come in handy. So for TensorFlow load, uh, so load extension tensor board and uh, to improve, uh, to include the logs which is inside the branch directory. So when you will run this uh, this module, you'll see that one runs directory has been uh, formed here, okay, inside your current directory. 
and the launch directory actually having all the logs which you have written from your TV. Okay, so all these logs for each run will be written, and we are actually loading all the logs from runs directory. So we are log we we are uh, so this command will uh, will log all the uh, logs from your uh, runs directory or any other directory you are using. If you are using other directories, you just rename it. But the important thing is that we can also define which run you want to log. Okay. Here we are loading all the runs. Okay. Okay. So uh, now after running this, you will get this TensorBoard uh, view here. So this display will uh, have these images. So as you can see, the images we have loaded. So this is the uh, fashion image to load uh, images that we, uh, we have loaded from the TV writer. So just just to show you, but from we loaded the images, right? So when we have uh, written the images, the grid, we have formed the grid first, right? With this uh, utils make grid function in the dot vision. And then this grid is added to this as images. And then the graph is also added as graph. So we will see the training uh, module graph, right? So for the graphs, you can go to the graphs tab. And you can see the graphs uh, are essentially compressed here. So the input is 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 the input uh, to your module. You can click into any module and you can see what kind of layer it is, okay? Uh, and and uh, what is the dimension? You can click onto it and it will actually uh, uh, enlarge, okay? So basically, it will focus onto uh, each layers specifications wise graph okay so this is the computational graph that we are talking about so in the first class we have uh, talked about the computational graph so basically the input vectors the weights biases now you are if you are doing convolution operation or linear operation uh, which is the of uh, uh, the fully connected operation that you can do so uh, so what kind of operation you are doing okay so you, you can see uh, for each uh, layer convolution one to the uh, one, then linear fully connected layer, fully connected layer two, linear output, and and also you can see uh, the dimensions. Okay, so at the output we are giving uh, ten and ten batches. Okay, so ten by ten is the so uh, in the output we have linear output. Okay, so uh, the entire graph you can see as as the graph here. So uh, once uh, you, you can you can analyze uh, from the network definition and the graph uh, actually outcome what is uh, you are getting. So all the attributes you can see here, as well as like whether you are uh, what kind of device, I mean in which device it is transferred. So all this structure you can see. Now uh, in the scalars, so as I was mentioning that the the graphs are essentially loss versus your epoch, uh, your correctness versus your epoch, the uh, accuracy versus epoch. So all these are added inside your uh, scalars. TV dot add scalars. So now you can see the accuracy versus epoch graph. So how for each run? Okay, so uh, you can select also these run. So these are the runs. So we have. Uh, renamed it with uh, the the date, the batch size, uh, the shuffle value, and error value. Okay. So as I was mentioning that for each combination, you will get one such uh, profile. Okay. So all these profilers we are giving output. Here, okay. Uh, so that is why we have different different uh, 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 different logs here. You can see. Okay. So. You can also write some like uh, ex, uh, expression to filter the runs. Also. Okay, so this is just uh, some functionality added here. Uh, now the hyperparameters. So the important thing I wanted to show here is that the analysis that you are seeing here is not very uh, uh, visible uh, to or, or not very 
uh, feasible to uh, analyze properly, right? So if you have, let's say, hundreds of runs uh, using multiple GPUs, you, you actually will get lost. So that H panels will have the entire parameters uh, a table view, okay? So table view will have parallel coordinates view will have, which is very important. Scatter plot matrix view also will have. So basically in the table view for each run, how many parameters batch size accuracy you can see in the one piece, okay? So this is also how you can analyze or better way to analyze is to see the parallel coordinates view. So now in the parallel coordinates view, you can see that loss is essentially uh, increasing and here the accuracy so lower accuracy to higher accuracy you are going right so this is the highest accuracy you are getting now for this highest accuracy what is the shuffle value what is your batch size you can track everything right what is your batch size and what is the inner value you can track so uh, for actually shuffle equal to true or false okay so that those were two definitions for your shuffle and for all the uh, uh, shuffle that we see that, uh, I mean, you are getting very less accuracy. So for higher accuracy, we'll go for shuffle equal to two. Batch size minimum is uh, actually good here. Uh, you can see the minimum with minimum batch size, you are getting good results. And and uh, the, uh, the LRE is 0 0.001 for your uh, highest accuracy for this training. Okay, so this is just the simple, uh, uh, analysis that you can do uh, with, with transfer board. So there are many other features that you will uh, like to explore inside this uh, go to TensorFlow, TensorBoard, uh, and, and, and you can explore more about this. We will see far, uh, a few more features of this transfer board in the coming cases. In the next uh, session, we would like to go towards uh, multi-GPU training. So we, were, we have seen that if you want to uh, include your training or, or transfer your training into your device, you are actually defining this part, right? So you are defining the device, uh, which is uh, the, the device here. So uh, you, you, are, you are actually uh, transferring the model to your device and transferring the data to your device. Now, we want to uh, run, so this device is only a single GPU here. Okay, now we will talk about how we can scale uh, our training for multiple genes. Okay. So this is uh, this is very interesting. This is very simple as well in PyTorch. Okay, so we have data parallel approach. We have model parallel. So data parallel approach is essentially you want to keep the model okay uh, replicated into let's say several GPUs, but data you want to segregate, right? And model parallel is the entire model you want to distribute across devices. Now there are, uh, so as name suggests, uh, you have actually uh, two such libraries available in PyTorch to, to uh, do data parallel and model parallel plus data parallel. Okay? So when you are doing model parallel, you can do data parallel as well, right? Because uh, since you are uh, distributing the model, you can distribute the data. Okay. So this is just one wrapper up to your data parallel. Now, there may be uh, different combinations of configurations that you might approach, right? So uh, you can have single machine data parallel, you can have single machine model parallel, because in multiple GPUs, you want to pipeline several models parallel execution, right? Several models, parallel execution, one single model will be uh, actually uh, uh, executed parallelly. You can pipeline several models training in the same pipeline because we'll show you uh, uh, like how this is happening inside multiple uh, device, single model uh, parallelly. And, and that way you will understand like how it, it will be pipeline. So this is very simple, but you just, if you see the figure, it will be uh, fairly easy to understand. Distributed data parallel, again, uh, data parallel in the distributed configuration set. So where you have multiple nodes, the so single node, multiple GPUs you can have, or multiple node, multiple GPUs you can have. That means multiple node 
and each node may have multiple users. That's what uh, the distributed data parallel setup or distributed setup rather defines. Now, distributed data parallel with model parallel also you can, right? Now, distributed model parallel will, uh, uh, so as I was mentioning that distributed essentially is one wrapper up on the data parallel. So basically you can have data parallel in the distributed, both the data parallel and model parallel and single model parallel. So now we talk about the single machine data parallel. So now you have multiple GPUs available inside your single node. Okay, so single node here means single machine. Okay, now how you, uh, so now we are talking about data parallel. That means each GPU will be operating on multiple sets, I mean, different sets of data, right? So that's why the I0, I1, I2, I3, so all these data that you are seeing, so basically your data is coming in batches. Now, depending on the number of GPUs available, you can scatter the data to uh, your multiple GPUs. Then you can replicate your model to several GPUs. You can train all this data parallelly. You will get some loss at the end of the, so remember the pipeline that we have talked about, at the end of the training, you will get the loss. And all these losses you will gather in the master node, master GPU node, or, or let's say GPU zero. Okay, if you define at GPU zero, so GPU zero node, and you will calculate the mean of these, and then actually you will compute the final loss. And then again, this process will be repeated, right? So this this loop will go on depending on how many data you have and how many epochs. Doing this in so you have seen the training uh, pipeline. This modification only will do your uh, data parallel activation. So basically, now we are transferring the model into, let's say, CUDA 0. Okay, so we have, let's say, CUDA 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, or 5, 6, 7. So total 8 GPUs we might have, or 4 GPUs in this case. So uh, CUDA 0. So first model you are trying to uh, replicate, I mean, which model you are trying to replicate, that model you are transferring to only single GPU first, and then you are applying data parallel model. And when you apply this data parallel, uh, NN dot data parallel function, automatically your, your model will be replicated from the GPU zero to all the other GPUs. And depending on the number of GPUs available and the batches you are uh, fetching, it will actually uh, segregate or scatter the data into your GPUs. So this is very simple. Now, single machine, multiple model parallel. So, uh, sorry, single machine, single model parallel. Okay. Uh, we are not yet talking about multiple uh, models. Okay. So, just stay with single model. Now, so we have several stages of pipeline. I mean, I mean several stages of the uh, of the training pipeline. You have seen that, right? So, what are the pipelines you want to let's say? Uh, Execute in which GPU you can define that, and depending on that, your data synchronization will happen. And the, in the end of all the sequences are happening, then you can actually compute the loss. Now, when this sequence is happening, at that point of time, you can actually feed through a different layer of different model into the first GPU while it is doing the second uh, sequence of the first model. Okay, so this is how you can pipeline. But basically, this is the code part will parallelize the, the model uh, execution into uh, different GPUs that you might have. So here, let's say we have two GPUs. So we are gathering those GPU IDs into GPU 0 and GPU 1. And then we are actually transferring these models, uh, defining this model. Uh, Layers. So this is just a simple definition of the layer that we want to execute in which GPU. So transferring the sequences of the training into the GPUs. Okay. Then we are doing the forward pass. Now which uh, net will be executed in which device? You can just transfer it into that GPU and and that's it. So one here once you have uh, defined like this model is essentially uh, running in let's say two gpus okay so this is very simple so this is 
these are the upgradation of the entire training, training pipeline that you have seen that needs to do that to enable this model convergence. You can also distribute data parallel. So basically, uh, now we are talking about distributed data parallel. Okay. So that means you have several nodes with multiple GPUs, right? So machine zero has let's say two GPUs, machine one has two GPUs, GPU two, GPU three. Now, uh, what we are doing here? So in the data parallel, we have seen that that model will be actually. Uh, replicated into several GPUs, and all the data will be scattered and uh, feed to the, uh, the the GPUs and losses on the computer. So, so this data parallel approach is again uh, very simple to, to parallelize because once you have defined multiple GPUs in multiple nodes, so let's say we have two nodes here, zero and one, and and with zero and one and two and three which is the definition of, or IDs of the GPUs for each machine. We are creating this list here, uh, okay? So one, so basically uh, you need to define the rank also because the number of rank will define how many processes will be created or the replicas will be created. So basically to avoid GIL, so which is the global interrupt lock, uh, because actually you need to synchronize in, in each round of loss computation okay so so that's why uh, how many number of uh, gpus you have those many number of ranks definition is the thumb rule so then you can define the model uh, in to the gpu zero because from the gpu zero actually it will be uh, uh, replicated to other gpus when you will define this nn dot parallel dot ddp so ddp is essentially the data parallel uh, distributed data parallel uh library okay so then we can actually use this model and these devices okay. so this is just the same as data parallel you can see one wrapper up of data parallel approach okay. and then you know, you have training loop and and for each machine rank in the word size so word size is essentially the total number of processes in all the machines and rank is the total number of processes in each machine okay and depending on that, it will actually uh, create multiple threads, and 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 uh, the the so this is this is just just to fork and join your processes. But ultimately, your uh, code for training will uh, differ this much. Okay? So text, uh, which is the distributed data parallel with model parallel. Okay? So uh, again multiple nodes we have so these multiple nodes having multiple gps we have seen and if you remember the model parallel in a single gpu okay a single machine multiple gpu so 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 you have defined which layer actually so let's say uh, subnet one and subnet two are the two sequences in your training um, in your training model and, and let's say they are simply fully connected layer okay for simplicity we are taking fully connected layer now which layer will go to which device that we have defined so basically gp0 and 1 you have defined but you have uh, made available these uh, sequences to those gpus because you want to parallelize the model execution to the GPUs. Uh, and also when you are doing the forward pass, you need to uh, also uh, get the data available for that because you can see the output of the uh, this layer is going to the input of this layer. So if you do not give Y as the input to the second layer, which is the GPU one, because your next layer is being executed in the GPU one. So this pipeline you need to set up. So this is what I was talking about. When you were trying to replicate, uh, uh, sorry, uh, when you were trying to uh, parallelize the model execution, in accordance with defining which layer will go to which GPU, which data also will go to which GPU, it will, uh, you, you need to define it properly. Otherwise, 
you will have wrong uh, loss computation. Okay. Now uh, we are talking about the data parallel uh, as well as uh, model parallel. Okay? So uh, in multiple nodes, you have multiple GPUs. In in one node, you are trying. I mean, in all the nodes, may basically you are trying to parallelize the model execution with parallel data. Okay. So that is why, uh, again, you can see that data parallel is always there with distributed uh, um, model parallel. Okay. So this is the inherent uh, 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 functionality that distributed data parallel will use. Now, when you are trying to uh, define this, because Let's say you have uh, GPUs in zero and one node. You have in zero node zero and one, and one node two and three with this machine rank. Now you have uh, con I mean, converted your model into this parallel, and this is the training loop which will run. Okay. Now, once uh, you have you are working with DDP, okay, not the data parallel. Right. So uh, again, just to make sure that you remember this part. So this is actually uh, we, we are not using the distributed data parallel. Okay. So this is just we are transferring which model sequence will go to which uh, uh, GPU. Okay. So we are not using any redefined library. Okay. Now. Here, once we are using DTP, you, when you are transfer, so that time we needed to define which sequence will go and how the output and input will make the connection between different GPUs outputs and inputs. But here, since you are using DTP, uh, torch.mn.parallel.dtp, we do not need to define that. We just, uh, it, it will just, just take care of all the data parallel uh, scatter. So basically what it will do, it will, Scatter the data according to different uh, replicas of the model, and different replicas of the model will have different sequences allocated to different GPUs inside one. Okay. And then, uh, how many processes? These are the standard uh, process spawning. Okay. So, this is this will be used. So, this is how you can just scale your training entire pipeline that you have seen so far. Uh, with, with the use of these two libraries, one is the data parallel library and one is distributed data parallel library in Python. There are also other libraries and other packages available you can use. So once you know actually the basics of, of these two libraries, there is also RPC, which is remote procedure called from, uh, uh, from PyTorch. So basically we will not have the uh, uh, bandwidth to discuss that. Uh, package, but you can go to py, uh, pytorch.org to get details of that package as well. But apart from the standard packages that is available with Pytorch, so all these are developed by Facebook, and also the the development is uh, continuously getting updated. Uh, there might be a few bugs in the previous versions. Next version will come up with with the fixes. So all these things you will see, but there is a strong community available for that, and and uh, you, you can actually also contribute if you want to for uh, developing these libraries. So uh, this is completely open source project. And apart from that, that I was talking about, there what there is also some third party libraries that is using that PyTorch uh, modules uh, to 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 abstract more of these tasks even in fancier ways. So that also you can you can see in, in many other uh, libraries. So few of them maybe we will discuss in the next class, but uh, uh, this class will uh, include uh, conclude here. And for the code, uh, you can go to this uh, uh, link for getting uh, access to one very, very uh, uh, intuitive, uh, implementation of that data parallel. So basically, we have seen how to uh, actually uh, tweak your entire training with just few lines of code to make it available to multiple GPUs. 
So, so one such example is there in this, uh, which is available in this. Thank you for today. We'll now go towards the question and substantial.